Well, uh, thank you very much, and I'd like to go ahead and uh, get started. And to begin as I explain the title, uh, most of you are familiar with the Pandora myth, where Pandora opened a box that released all of the evils in the world. Well, in contrast, uh, I like to think that ambient ionization, starting with Dart and Desi, opened, opened a box, and in this case, I'm thinking of the box as the ion source, making analysis a whole lot easier for all of us. And this really led to a new generation of atmospheric pressure ion sources. Now, uh, DART got started uh, more than 10 years ago. In fact, we first measured the uh, mass spectra from a DART in 2002 or 2003, and it was really quite exciting. Uh, I think we'd originally planned to build something else, and the fact that we could discover, uh, that we could analyze compounds in open air in front of the mass spectrometer simply by putting things in front of it was really quite exciting. Now, uh, in the past 10 years that DART has been around, DART's been applied to almost every kind of analysis just in one form or another, from synthetic chemistry to you know, forensic analysis, uh, arc conservation, explosives, and uh, quite a bit of uh, application recently to food and beverage analysis, particularly uh, pesticides on, uh, on fruit. Now, the term ambient ionization is, uh, was first proposed by Graham Cooks in 2004. It was originally applied to the DESI and, and uh uh, about the same time, the DART ionization net sources. And it's come to mean any atmospheric pressure ion source that provides direct analysis with minimal sample preparation. Uh, we'll talk about those terms in a minute, but first let's get started by taking a look at an example of uh, what this really means. Uh, here are a couple of photos of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the DART ion source. This is the first generation DART ion source on the left, and uh, the Accusop DART uh, mass spectrometer that I use for most of my work. Now, if we uh, take a quick look at the video here, this is showing the analysis of an over-the-counter uh, tablet. It's an antihistamine, actually. It's a loratadine tablet. We've got the uh, mass spectrometer in the inset there showing uh, an enlarged view of the region around the loratadine. And I've zoomed in so you can see the peaks. These are actually quite small, but uh, we've zoomed in so that the uh, small peaks jump off scale. Uh, and the the left-hand top corner, you see a side view of a sample being introduced to the DART, and, and you see the real-time view of the mass spectrum there. In this case, we've written the word DART on a piece of paper with a uh, red magic marker. And you can see the rhodamine being detected uh, whenever the uh, red ink is placed in the DART gas stream. Now, in the inset, the gas is blowing from the right to the left uh, out of the DART ion source into the mass spectrometer uh, sampling orifice. We can do one or two more examples of these sorts of things. We're just repeating it to show that how reproducible the signal is. And here we're just dipping a melting point tube into a, an olive oil sample and uh, holding the, the sealed end of the melting point tube with the olive oil droplets on it in dark gas stream. What you'll see in the mass spectrum is actually the triglycerides in the olive oil, uh, primarily triolein, but other things as well. I think that'll give you an idea of uh, how this works. Uh, we can probably go ahead and stop the video right there. All right, and then uh, go ahead, we'll go ahead and resume by talking about how DART ionization works. Uh, DART ionization is based on penning ionization, which is a term originally developed by F.W. Penning in 1927, where they discovered that excited state neutrals can produce an ion and electron if they come in contact with a sample that has a lower ionization energy than the energy of the neutral. So the first step in DART ionization is, is the penning ionization, where the sample is ionized directly by energy transfer from long-lived excited state neutrals, uh, or as we call them, metastables. And that interacts with the sample of atmospheric gases. Now, to a first approximation, the uh, first step is that uh, electronically excited helium ionizes atmospheric moisture, and the ionized water clusters then can transfer a proton to the sample that, is, um, that has a basic or polar site. Uh, that's the primary mechanism for ionization in positive ion mode. But in negative ion mode, uh, the electron produced in the first heading ionization step interacts with atmospheric oxygen, and the ionized oxygen then uh, produces ions from the sample. 